In 1959, Italian President Giovanni Gronchi unveiled a 42-meter-high obelisk to honor the memory of inventor Giuliano Marconi. Sculptor Arturo Dazzi carved scenes from Marconi's remarkable life into a hunk of Carrara marble, and the distinguished crowd paid tribute to the Nobel Prize winner, one of the world's most influential scientists. Marconi was born in Bologna in 1874, the son of an Irish noblewoman and a wealthy Italian landowner. In the late 1800s, he became fascinated with Heinrich Hertz's discovery of electromagnetic radiation, or radio waves. He conducted his own experiments with the aim of developing a system that would use radio waves to transmit messages across vast distances. While the electric telegraph had been doing this for some time using telegraph wires, Marconi was determined to establish a wireless telegraph system. In 1897, he became the first person to send a wireless communication over water. It traveled 14 kilometers across the Bristol Channel, from South Wales to Flathome Island. Marconi spent 50,000 pounds to set up the experiment that would provide the first wireless transmission across the Atlantic. Previously, scientists had believed that the curvature of the Earth would prevent the radio waves from reaching across such a vast distance. But Marconi disagreed, and on the 12th of December, 1901, after several unsuccessful attempts, he was on hand to hear the dot, dot, dot of the letter S being transmitted from Cornwall to Newfoundland. Over the next decade, wireless stations were set up around the world and telegraph operators became important members of ship's crews. In 1909, distress calls sent via wireless telegraph helped save 1,700 lives, following the collision and sinking of two liners off the coast of the United States. Within a few years, it became mandatory for large ships to carry telegraphic equipment. Marconi was also instrumental in the development of commercial radio. In 1920, his British factory was the site for the UK's first entertainment radio broadcasts, and regular broadcasts were launched in 1922. While Marconi's scientific pursuits were lauded all the world over, his political leanings were a little more controversial. In 1923, he joined the Italian Fascist Party and became a supporter of Benito Mussolini, who appointed him to prominent positions within his regime. Marconi also returned to his Catholic roots and following a divorce from his first wife in 1924 had the marriage annulled by the church in 1927 so he could marry again. His second wife was a daughter of Vatican nobility but they were only married for 10 years before Marconi died in 1937. In a unique tribute, radio transmitters were shut down across the world for two minutes of silence to honor the man who contributed so much to modern communication. In 1894, Oxford physicist Professor Oliver Lodge had successfully transmitted a Morse code message across 150 meters. However, the professor saw the experiment as purely academic. Only Marconi planned to develop a commercial application for the technology and could see the immense benefits it would bring to shipping and military interests. Marconi's genius lay not in being the discoverer of wireless technology, it was in being the first person to apply the science in a practical way. In the years before his death, he started experimenting with microwaves for blind navigation by radio beacon. That technology was later developed into radar. Marconi's company is still a leader in communications technology and employs more than 48,000 people. It was floated on the London Stock Exchange in 1999.